Hi, this is a minute of overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now this week I want to talk about how much you should actually charge for your app. Okay, so this week I want to talk about price. Now, if you're an app developer, I'm actually really curious about price because you know, we all kind of are kind of cagey about this and not really talk about you know how much we charge or how many people actually buy the paid version. It's, it's all well and good to talk about the, the downloads and the free versions and all that kind of stuff, but, but the paid versions we're all kind of cagey about, so it's interesting. So, so this week, what I thought I would do is kind of t- talk to you a little bit about my experience with the price of my apps uh, and you know how, that, how things have actually turned out and... Uh, and hopefully that helps and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so basically, when I released my first app called EarSpy, uh, we released a, a free version, uh, which you had like well, ads and uh, uh, you know, like one in-app purchase, which I think was MP3 recording, right? And, uh, we, and we also had a paid version. So, like the the free version, I think we charged like fifty cents for each of the uh, in-app purchases, if I remember correctly. Uh, this was like three years ago. And the the paid version uh, was was like ninety nine cents or you know sixty nine p in the in the UK. Uh, and my my logic at the time was how could anybody say no to that? It's like the lowest price, and if I can just get enough people, then I can make a, a good you know a good amount off of that. So and what I found was we, it didn't get all that many purchases. I mean I would get like maybe a few dozen a day. You know some days I would get a few dozen, some days I would get you know five or six, some days I would get none. Uh, but you know. But yeah, I couldn't quite figure it out. It was because the the actual free version was going up and up in downloads, and ad revenue was actually you know surpassing the purchases, right? So and after a year of having this one price, you know, I was reading lots of different things, and and I had read something by somebody who said that the the price difference between ninety nine cents and two ninety nine is not that big a difference. And so so what I did was I raised the price to uh, to one ninety nine, and then I raised it to two ninety nine, and then I raised it. So right now, if you were to buy the full version of EarSpy, it actually costs five ninety nine. It's actually one of the more expensive apps out there. And what I found was, as I, each time I raised the price, you know, I would notice that the the number of purchases each day would go down, but the revenue would go up. So it was, it was actually caused you know less support. So if somebody wanted to say have all the extra features and they want to uh, to have no ads and you know they could pay a bit extra for that but they could also do in-app purchases through within the app and buy like uh, say they want to just remove the ads because they're annoying or they want to remove the uh, you know they want to add one new feature now if they go through the through the free version and buy everything individually it costs just slightly more than than paying the full version I, and I thought of it like if you buy tracks on iTunes versus buying the whole album you know I thought it should be a bit more and and I found you know it what I find, and you know, my whole philosophy on this, is that the psychological difference of of paying, uh, you know, zero, going from free to one cent, is a bigger psychological difference than going from one dollar to three dollars. Because once you decide that you're actually going to pay something, then you know that's not a lot of money. You know, the the, the hassle is going through and and going through that dialog box. Maybe you have to remember your password for iTunes or whatever. And even just something that comes up and said, hey, we're going to charge your credit card. Are you sure you want to do this? And then you think, actually, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I, I don't want to do that or, or whatever. So, you know, it, it's, it, there's a whole bunch of things in play there that, um, you know, every time when I hear somebody, like I'll meet with a client and they'll say, well, what we'll do is we'll charge just like a small amount because then we'll get lots of people or, some, or they'll say we'll charge a lot and then, you know, not have a free version because if we have a free version then we're practically just giving it away. And what I find is that strategy doesn't work at all. Uh, one time I did release a uh, one an app as a paid version only, and it was called uh, Read Racer. So we released the, uh, the the paid version, and I thought this time no ads. We're just gonna you know we're gonna market it really well. We're gonna have a video, all this kind of stuff, and you know. It got some downloads, but it was it was hardly any. It was like I think after a couple of weeks, maybe we got maybe ten. It was it was hardly a thing. So it, so we did release it as a free version. I thought you know if. You know, there's no sense in having something out there that doesn't make any money. At least if I can, you release a free version, then people can give it a try. Maybe you can upsell them to in-app purchases, or maybe uh, you know make some money through the ads. Maybe they'll click on some ads, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so that that's the way I found it. You know, it's um, okay. So so don't fall for the whole. You know, you know, if it's cheap, then people will buy it because that's not the case. It's it's a it's a bigger case. You know, if you're going to release an app and if you're going to charge for it 
charge a decent amount for it, right? You don't don't ever charge 99 cents. So so that's that's my experience. I'd love to know how it works out for you. You know how, you know how things go. You know, we, we, it's such an uphill battle just to get people to notice your app, just to get them to download it. That you know when you get them in there, then you you got to focus on that. How do you get people to pay? Which is you know the, the the less successful app developers are not so much focused on getting people in. They're focused on how do they get them to pay, and then nobody ever gets there. So uh, so that's just my opinion. Uh, that's it for this week. I'll talk to you next week. Goodbye. Hey, I really hope you liked that video. Uh, now I do these once a week, so if if you if you want to hear more or you want to you know hear more about uh, our experiences with the App Store, either Google Play or iTunes, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and please like this video and and leave a comment. I love reading the comments. I love hearing what you have to say, even if it's just hello or 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 whatever. And and like I say before. Um, if you if you're not sure what to, to say in a comment, like I never know what to say in a comment, I'll make it easier for you. Like if if you liked it, just go ahead and say gnarly, uh, which is an '80s term. Or uh, if you didn't like it, just say bogus. And and if you didn't think any of it, just say eh. Right. So and so that that would be a big 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 help. And and another thing you could do, uh, which I'd really appreciate it, if you're on the App Store and you want to try one of our apps, look up some of the Overpass apps uh, applications, either on iTunes or Google Play, and and leave a review and, and let us know what you think about it, either good or bad. But uh, you know, it, it's uh, we're all trying to you know build up in the market, so uh, so that would be a big help. So so that's it. I'll talk to you next week.